Today we're taking a look at the RTX 4070 Super in the 3 d Mark Synthetic Gaming Benchmarks. The 3 d Mark Benchmark tests are helpful for gauging where your graphics card might fall in terms of relative performance to other graphics cards that are either newer or that you might just be unfamiliar with. It's especially helpful in the future when you're looking back at performance of older generation cards. I'll be testing the ASUS Dual OC RTX 4070 Super model here, both in its stock form as well as overclocked on my Ryzen 9700X test rig. The test rig that I'm using here today is configured with the 9700X having PBO enabled with the maximum 200 MHz offset, the 10X scaler enabled as well. The CPU cooler is the Be Quiet 420mm Silent Loop 3 water cooler, and the system is running 32GB of G-Skill DDR5 6000 CL memory. For the first test, we'll take a look at the Steel Nomad benchmark since it's a bit newer. All of the results that you'll see in all of the testing today, by the way, are the average of three test runs in each scenario. Starting off with the stock testing, the 4070 Super managed an average score of 4,610 points, and then with the overclock applied, the average score raised to 4,866 points. That's about a 5.6% performance gain. As for the total system power draw, measured with a kilowatt meter, the stock GPU test averaged about 308 watts, and the overclock test averaged about 325 watts. So about a 5.5% increase in power for that 5.6% increase in performance. Next, let's move on to the 3D Mark Times by benchmark. As for the stock run, the GPU averaged about 20,988 points for the GPU score, and the overall score averaged about 19,418 points. By the way, the CPU scores were unchanged during all of these tests because nothing was changed with the CPU configuration. Now let's look at the overclock score. With the overclock applied, the GPU average score was raised to 22,163 points, or again, about a 5.5% performance gain, and then the overall score average was raised to 20,251 points, or about a 4.3% overall performance gain. As for the power draw, the stock setup was drawing about 350 watts, then with the overclock applied on the GPU, I saw about 370 watts, so about a 5.7% increase in power for this performance gain. In normal gaming scenarios, if you're only applying this overclock when you're gaming, I think that's totally worthwhile. Next, we'll move on to the Speedway benchmark. The stock setup averaged about 5,235 points at 310 watts of total system power draw. With the overclock applied, we saw that average score increased to about 5,502 points, or about a 5.1% increase in performance, and that total system power draw was increased from 310 watts to 344 watts. So in this test, it was about a 10% increase in power draw for that 5% performance gain. This one was a little bit of an outlier here versus the other tests. It must just have to do with Speedway. As for the last 3D Mark benchmark that we're taking a look at today, we have Port Royal. With the 4070 Super set to stock speeds, the system averaged about 13,036 points at about 317 watts of total power draw. With the GPU overclock applied, the average system performance raised to about 13,855 points, or about a 6.3% performance gain. As for the total system power, we saw that increase to about 338 watts. That was about a 6.62% increase in power for a 6.3% increase in performance. Overall, I would have to say that the RTX 4070 Super can definitely benefit from some quick and dirty overclocking. I'm pretty sure if I got more dialed in in terms of my overclock, I could squeeze out a little bit more from the core and the memory, but it would require more intense stability testing in order to validate that result. Generally speaking, the GPU saw an average increase of about 5.5% in terms of performance for about a 6% increase in power draw. Like I said before, if you're really only applying these overclock settings during gaming sessions, or your card just happens to idle a lot when you're not gaming, I definitely think the effort in stability testing to find out your max overclock is totally worth it. That extra 5.5%, maybe even 6%, might help with certain quality settings or make higher resolution games that were kind of on the edge of playable 
just that much better of an experience. When you combine that with the LSS and frame generation, you could really have some performance benefits here. I'll leave some affiliate links in the description below if you want to check out the RTX 4070 Super and the rest of the components that I used in this benchmark system. If you got anything out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you smash that like button, as that tells YouTube to share this video with other gamers who are looking at the RTX 4070 Super. Gaming PC and component testing videos with the occasional home lab video is really the focus of this channel. If you're into that kind of thing, make sure to get subscribed and ring that bell for notifications. Until next time, keep on gaming.